Man, these farms are cool. I need to consider building some of these in my survival world. <laughs> What's up agents, Zero here and welcome back to another Minecraft Pocket Edition video and today we're going to be taking a look at a map that contains a whole bunch of different uh, farms that you can build in survival. Now farms in terms of survival are extremely useful, I mean I've built a number of them already, it, well in my past I have, now I don't have too many farms going on my current survival world, it's still kind of early on but um yeah, this is basically farms that you can build in survival, and let me go ahead and be honest, some of these are fully automatic, meaning you don't really have to do much of anything. Some of them are semi-automatic, which means you actually have to have some form of input in order to be able to do much of anything. Like, for example, I can see there's a cocoa bean farm right here. I'm fairly certain you have to press a button to activate a water stream. And then replant the cocoa beans yourself, which is fairly common for cocoa beans. I mean, you can't really have them replant themselves. So, yeah, here's all the information. All the farms can be bigger or smaller and could have completely different designs. So, yeah, this is all created by one guy. This is MDS Minecraft 45. Make sure to give him a link to his channel in the description. I will make sure to do that. Um... I usually try to put someone's Twitter in the description, and apparently he doesn't seem to have a Twitter, otherwise I make sure to do it, but dude, I will make sure to have your uh, YouTube link in the description, just so you let know about that, so let's go ahead and take a look at what some of these are, so right here we have ourselves a cow farm, so this is not an automatic, so this makes an efficient food supply, so I'm assuming, I think I know what to do here. So, I push this button right here. I've seen these things before. So, it spawns water and gives us access to the cows. And then all we have to do now is start breeding them. Alright, just like that. Let's go ahead and put them back down here. And the way it's supposed to work... From what I understand about farms is that baby cows get pushed down in this direction and when they uh, grow up into adults then you push a button right here which I'm assuming this button fires a dispenser with lava in it. Yeah, it's hooked up to a dispenser and an observer which by the way this is not the default uh, face for observer. This is actually a texture pack that I have turned on that gives me the PC observer face. Pocket Edition observers have a completely different look. Uh, I'll have a link in the description if you guys want to take a look at it for yourself. If I can remember where I got it from, I might not be able to find it again. So basically what this does is that when these cows, the baby cows get pushed into here, they, they will eventually grow up. You Activate this, you get yourself lava, and you get your food drops from the cows. And so right here we have ourselves a cocoa bean farm. This is fairly simple. I'm not going to show you guys how to activate because it's fairly simple. And I'm not going to, well actually I'll show you how it works, but I'm not going to actually activate it. But here's what's going on. You go into these dispensers. Water buckets come out, they flow, they actually drop the cocoa beans, and they're supposed to land inside of these hoppers. However, in my experience, sometimes they flow out a little bit to the side, so I would highly recommend adding a few more hoppers. I mean, they do mostly land in the hoppers, but they do have a tendency to, like, spew out, like, a few inches from where they're supposed to land, and they just land all in here but obviously I'm not going to activate this because I know how it works okay this one is an a cocoa bean not not cocoa bean farm what the heck am I saying uh this is a sugar cane farm this one is actually fully automatic the way this works just by looking at it um what happens is that when the sugar cane grows 
up past the observer. The observer sees it, powers the piston, which breaks it, and it falls down into the hoppers below, which I don't have observers, and I could make pistons. I don't have sugarcane. I suppose I could build one of these in my survival world without a problem. But then again, I need quartz in order to make the observers. I have to do that first. Man, these farms are cool. I need to consider building some of these in my survival world. Anyway, moving on, we have ourselves a farm for nether warts. Now, nether warts, obviously, if you guys are familiar with nether warts, then, they're, then you know that they're used for potions, and I do believe... If I go ahead and look in, yeah, there's water inside these dispensers. So if I go ahead and turn this on, it's going to send out water. Yeah, like I said about the uh, cocoa beans, which is part of the reason why I didn't do it, is because sometimes they get strewn about and they don't actually land in the hoppers, which is a little bit of a problem. Sometimes they do get a little stuck. But this is basically what's supposed to happen. And the cocoa bean farm is the exact same way. However, I don't personally like using uh, water in order to do my cocoa beans. I actually use a piston cocoa bean farm. You guys might have seen one of my tutorials on that before. I don't necessarily know about that. Next we have ourselves a villager breeder. Now I've never actually built one of these. I know they're actually rather useful in order to actually get decent trades off of them. So basically what's going on, or at least what's supposed to happen, is that these guys are creating a bit of a village and then down here these guys are supposed to breed with each other, which I'm not entirely sure how the breeding process works regarding villagers is but i know for a fact they breed the babies run around they fall down into hole down here and well this guy's got set up to avoid but normally you'd set up like a water system and you'd bring them around to some place and then you have villagers to trade with let's see do we have okay bread i'm assuming we throw the bread in here and give it to them, they start tossing it around at each other, and then eventually they start breeding. Villager breeding to me is completely confusing. I'm not going to bother. Okay, so here we have infinite two block flower farm. So I have never seen one of these before. I have no idea what the heck this even is. Okay, so I've got two tall flowers. I have no idea what this is even supposed to do. Oh! Oh, that's what's going on. But how does that even work? I don't even understand. I don't know what the heck this thing even is. I mean, I mean, I can take a look at the redstone and see if I can figure it out from there. But I don't understand the process of these kind of things. And I mean, okay, let's see. Take a look. Okay, we've got ourselves a comparator clock running into these dispensers. What's in these dispensers? Bone meal. Okay, I guess that makes sense, but me personally, I've never had a need for actual double tall flowers. I mean, I know there are some people who like having double tall flowers for various reasons. I've never found one, and... Until I looked at the red zone of this, I had no idea how the thing even works. But now that I see how it works, it makes perfect sense. So let's go ahead and move on. So this one right here is a basic crop farm. Wheat, potatoes, beetroot, and carrots. And this one functions the exact same way as the nether warp farm that we have over here. Except it's with these crops. And he actually did a decent job of putting the hoppers down here in front of it. Now, obviously, with both the nether warp farm and the crop farm, and then also going for the cocoa bean farm as well, you actually have to replant everything manually. I'm going to leave this one alone because I understand how this one works. 
All right, so this next one we have ourselves, I do believe this one is a tree farm. Yes. Okay, so the it says not automatic because you actually have to harvest the wood yourself. I mean, that's the obvious way. You always have to harvest the wood yourself, but growing the trees is actually relatively good, and I think I know how this works. Because I think I've built one of these before. It's been a long time though. So let's see if I go in here. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of bone meal in here. You put down your sapling here because... Well, actually I shouldn't say it's fully automatic because obviously it's not. You have to harvest the wood. But then even then you have to replant the saplings yourself. So you put the sapling down. The dispenser's going. It bone meals the tree. And then when the tree grows... The observer will see the fact that the tree has grown. These pistons will activate pushing the logs this way, which, by the way, the leaves will, in fact, be destroyed by pistons, so you don't have to worry about the leaves. Although, having the leaves on the tree, me, personally, I like having them there because, one, it makes the tree look nice. I mean, obviously, it wouldn't be a tree without them. But second, that's where all the saplings come from because you don't have the leaves, you don't get the saplings in the first place. So let me go ahead and run this because I want to see how fast this thing works. I mean, we've only got like, what? Yeah, four sacks of bone meal, so it's possible it may run out. I don't necessarily know. So I'm assuming what I go ahead and do is... I want to say I stand like right in here and I just continually plant these saplings. Something like this. And I'm wondering if it's even going to grow. Oh, there it goes. And I took a little bit of damage from the leaves. And I wasn't actually expecting... Oh, I got to put down another uh, sapling. Obviously, it's not going to work without another sapling. So, what I was going to assume how this works is actually not the way I thought it would work. The way I assumed it would work, and whoa, I'm taking damage here. The way I was going to assume it would work is it would actually push the logs along this way, and then when this observer detects it, it would run the redstone signal up to the rest of the pistons but apparently there seems to be a bit of an issue with the redstone so it's not acting the way i would expect it to i mean i mean it's not a bad system it's just not what i would expect out of a tree farm And you guys know me. I understand my redstone, so I know for a fact this is, this doesn't look, per personally this doesn't look right. It's supposed to um, push these along, and once it reaches here, like I said, then it's pushing. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. I'd have to investigate the redstone to see exactly what's happening, but I honestly have no idea. And then, let's see, we have ourselves, this farm right here, this one's an automatic pumpkin slash melon farm. Now the problems that I have with automatic pumpkins and melon farms is that they're not 100% perfect. What they're supposed to do is they're supposed to push the pumpkins and melons that do grow along here and put them into the hoppers. The issue that I've had with these is that it doesn't always collect them. The most most of the time you actually have to collect them doing this, which I suppose isn't too big of a problem. What I usually end up doing is actually putting hopper minecarts underneath these and they run and pick everything up. That's just me personally, but this is most commonly what's used when it comes to melon slash pumpkin farms. This is the most common method and I don't blame him for building it this way because this is what most people use. Alright, so what do we have here? We have ourselves an automatic cactus farm. Now, an automatic cactus farm doesn't actually use any redstone at all. If you guys understand how cactus farms work, then this makes sense. But if it doesn't, 
Cactus can't actually grow next to blocks. So as soon as one of these cactus grows, say this cactus I'm looking at right here. If it grows and it's next to this fence post, it can't do that. So what has to happen is the cactus actually breaks that block. And one of two things will happen. Either it lands back on itself and breaks or falls down into the water below. And I personally never had a need for cactus myself. I mean, you smelt it down, get cactus green, and it's used for dye, but that's about it. I've never really seen too much of a need for cactus other than that. We got ourselves a couple more farms over here. Let's see, we've got Mob Farm, farm XP Grinder, plenty of names. Um, okay, so I've built something similar to this in the past. It's been a while. Basically, what's going on here for those of you who aren't familiar, mobs spawn in that giant box because it's just a giant black box on the inside. Well, I shouldn't say black, but it's completely dark in there. And then mobs just kind of wander around aimlessly. And then, then there's a water stream down the center. And when they fall into that water stream, they get pushed down and fall down in this hole. And then you just simply punch them a few times. And apparently he's got a start the spawner button right here, which I suppose is a relatively smart idea. Personally, I like having a big black box and then having a mob softener because that makes things a whole lot easier. But this works too. I mean, this, this definitely works. And I've been wanting to build a skeleton grinder in my survival world for a while because I do have that skeleton spawner. The problem is it's too close to the surface and I need to get silk touch on a pickaxe and move that down a few blocks before I do anything with it. Okay, so what do we have here? A wheat farm. Okay, I've seen these things before. These are relatively simple. So the way this works is that these dispensers will dispend uh, dispense endless amounts, of, well I shouldn't say endless amounts of bone meal, but it dispenses a lot of bone meal. So what happens is that you turn the lever on, it activates a redstone clock, and then you just start planting all of your crops down in a row like this, and they'll just grow. And so you just simply walk back and forth, because as you can tell, there's a piston right here. When we step on the pressure plate, the pris pe the pi uh, I can't talk to you. The piston goes into action, and then you just walk across the other side, step on this piston, push it along. So let me go ahead and demonstrate this one really quick. So let's grab our seeds. So if I go ahead and insert the dispensers, so I just start doing this. And here's what's going on here. The bone meal is causing these to uh, grow fast. And then when you step on the pressure plate, the um, blocks break the crops. And that's how you get all of your harvest from it. Now, this does consume a ton of bone meal. I mean, a ton. I mean, you have to have a decent a skeleton grinder and a ton of bone meal in order to get one of these things going. But this does produce a lot of crops at once. And it doesn't even have to be wheat like this person actually put together with. You can actually do it with beetroot. You can do it with carrots. You can do it with potatoes. It's extremely efficient, but like I said, it does require a lot of bone meal. And let's see, we have... A bonus farm, infinite diamond farm. Um, I think I've seen one of these things before, and this is actually not something you build in survival. I don't think, no. I'm fairly certain if I were to break through this sandstone. Yeah, there's a command block down there. But it is infinite diamonds, I'm going to say that much. I think I know what the command is, too, but this is a really cool... I mean, let me see. Can I take a look at the command in here? No, I'm in survival. I can't look at commands. 
I think I know what's going on if the observer sees that there's no block there, it sends a redstone pulse to the command block, and from there it replaces the diamond block back. So it's infinite diamonds, but does require the use of command blocks, which isn't too big of a problem, but this is not something you build in survival. I mean, you can't get command blocks in survival unless you have commands on, which in that case, you're effectively cheating anyway. But that looks like it's about it for the farm, so I gotta say that's gonna have to do it for this video. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Well, more than make sure that subscribe button for future content. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at agentcp 0 to stay updated. This has been Zero Studios. Thank you guys for watching. And with that, I will see you guys later.